I've had this pop up a lot in the comments, especially of my recent review of an AMD Power Mini PC, is can we hook up an external GPU? You can, and I've tested this one out. It's been now a couple of days of me testing and messing about with this, having a bit of fun that you can actually run, of course, an external GPU on a laptop or a mini PC, and I've done this in the past, if you have a couple of things that are required. One is, of course, we're gonna need a laptop or mini PC that does have an NVMe slot in it, a drive. So I'm talking about PCIe times three, M.2 slot, then you can buy one of these. It's an ADT link, it's called external GPU stand to PCIe M.2 NVMe. And so that's why your laptop needs to have it. You also need to have on that laptop a secondary option for booting your operating system off, say, an SSD or hard drive. So a SATA or SATA 3 hard drive in that laptop or the mini PC, which this one actually supports, so we can boot our operating system. Now, this is very straightforward and easy to do and set up. And of course, you're gonna need a GPU. And depending on what kind of GPU you're gonna select, if it's quite a powerful one, then you're gonna to have to choose an actual desktop power supply unit. But with this particular model here, it's not that powerful, this GPU. I can actually use a Dell power supply for this one. And I'll show you all about this in this particular review. We'll do a little bit of testing, but I won't go too into depth because it's gonna vary, of course, on what GPU you actually use on this. But in my other test that I ran, I can see that we lose around about six to eight percent depending on the resolution versus say running this particular GPU or the other one I tested in a desktop to having it in this external PCIe card slot really set up and it's actually faster than the Thunderbolt 3 external GPU enclosures. Okay, so this is the key part we are gonna need, of course, to hook up an external GPU via PCIe. So it's using the NVMe slot. If you've got a spare one or just one in your particular laptop or your mini PC and also SATA or SATA drive, then you can boot an operating system and then of course run this. It's got the, you can see it looks like an NVMe SSD right at the end here, but that's just of course the connector, the PCIe connector for us. So this particular board here, the stand, I got it from AliExpress and it will cost you around somewhere between 60 and 70 US dollars depending on the cable length that you go for. So I went for 25 centimeters, which actually might be a little bit too short. So 50 could be ideal for some people, depends on your uses here. But I went for the shorter cable because I was a little bit concerned about performance losses having a longer cable. Now I did do a separate test. This is the first video I did on this, uh, which was well over a year ago. And it's not the same quality as this particular video here, but I did some testing with a GTX and it was the 1080 Ti and the performance loss versus having the card in this and then the card on my desktop was around six to 8% depending on the resolution. It actually wasn't really too bad. So this does have some switches here. Depending on your setup, you may have to toggle this with some of the delays. Now, how I've set it for this review, this particular video and the other mini PCs and everything's been working on is these little switches. I've set them all to the position number one. So that's the number one delay there, the shortest delays. And that actually seems to work quite fine for me. So on the underside here, we do have four feet that keep it upright and it's a bit of a stand here and I'm going to be using a smaller GPU for this uh, because it's just a GPU I have lying around uh, which is this one right here the EVGA it's a GTX 1060 quite old but I picked this up for super cheap a couple of years ago second hand and it's not actually a very good card this one it's got its issues but hey it's going to do for the purposes of this video so you could actually use a RTX 3080 if you didn't mind using losing about 6% performance versus a desktop. And you could even use um, various other cards, okay? So RTX 2080, whatever. It depends on your budget, what kind of performance you want. So here are the power connectors as well, very important. Now, I don't like the fact that all these contacts here are exposed, so you do have to be careful that you don't touch that, or you don't have little children that would touch this later on when it's running, when it's plugged in. So what I'm gonna be using to power it, because this particular GPU doesn't need any more than 200 watts, I can use a Dell power supply, which is a little bit tidier than having to use a desktop power supply unit, which you will probably have to use if you're gonna go for anything more powerful, you will definitely have to use one. So if you're gonna use an RTX 3080 and you need a lot of power, of course, you're gonna need well over 300 watts, then this won't actually work. It will probably run for a while, but as soon as you start gaming, it'll cut out 
and cause a reboot or a crash or whatever. So this is the power supply that you want if you're going to be running. Again, just to confirm, a power supply that's under 200 watts is its requirement. And it's called the DA-2 series. And I picked this up from eBay and I think it cost me like 30 pounds. So it's not particularly expensive. And they should be quite easy to source. There's quite a few of them out there too. So the connector on this one on the is a standard connector too as well. So very easy to source the cable for that. And what is important because it has the eight pin right here that we want, the plug. Okay, so that is what I'll be using to then plug into this location right here like so. Okay, so that just goes in. And you can see it does actually state on the motherboard here of the R. This is not the 3G, even though it states that. This is actually the R43. And this is linked down in the description of this video, of course, if you want to get one of these and set yourself up with an external GPU. So that's the connector I'm going to be using right there. And of course, never touch this once it's on or plugged in. And otherwise, you're going to get a nice little shock there. So I'll just quickly show you that installing the GPU is not difficult at all. So it's like in a, a motherboard of a desktop. So you simply need to slot it into place and you just need to put that through that hole and push it down. And that is then in. And I've got this bolt here, little screw, sorry, that I need to tighten that up. So that is what it looks like when it's all screwed into place and it's nice and secure on there. It will sit up just fine and it's not gonna go anywhere. And you can see there that I've got that support there that that's braced on screwed into place and it's nice and solid so i'll show you how now to connect of course this end into the pcie slot of say a mini pc which this one right here is my asus pn50 with the ryzen 5 4500u you can use other mini pc models of course it does not have to be amd you can use an intel one i've tested it with my intel one and it also works fine the main and key thing is here of course we need a free slot and a slot as well that can run our SSD. So I'm going to be installing this here as my SSD, uh, which is a 2.5 inch drive here, Samsung 850 Evo, and this just needs to be slotted in. So this is a little bit awkward to do. So the connector on this one is right under here. It's a little bit difficult. Now there's a gap in the cable if you did actually need to get to that screw through there, if you couldn't just bend the cable out of the way. Now the quality of the cable here, just wanted to point that out too, that it's not bad, okay? It isn't too bad, the quality. They've got a lot of like rubber a band around this and it seems to be good, but there's no actual connector here as well. So once you had this connected up and you wanted to remove it at the base of the GPU stand, you cannot actually do that. You need to unscrew it from inside your laptop or your mini PC. All right, enough talk, slot this in and that just slots into place. And now of course, I'm going to need to screw that in just down here. Hopefully you can see that camera focus. Sorry, it's a little bit over the all over the place. I have to use auto to show this. So I'm just gonna screw that down. So that is it installed inside my mini PC here. Now I know this question is gonna pop up, so that's why I'm just gonna show you that you're gonna have this, a cable that is kind of an awkward, annoying. I've got it open. So I could actually, if you weren't scared of doing this or damaging any of the outside plastics, then I could cut a little gap on the side here and then I would actually be able to then insert and lock down the rear lid of this particular mini PC. So as it is and as it stands right now, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna cut a hole in this yet because I don't intend to actually be running an external GPU with it. It's got integrated and it's powerful enough for my needs anyway. So that's what it's gonna look like. And you gotta be careful that you don't end up scratching and damaging that cable, which uh, I can see I have already done. So I'm just gonna be running it pretty much like that. Just have it sitting up on the side there. So let's get this plugged in. I need to plug in the power of course for this one. So that means the connector does need to go where I showed you before, at least with this power supply right here. Plug this in, okay, so that's for the Dell. And then we do need, of course, the cables for the GPU itself. So we've got this one right here that needs to be plugged in. Okay, very easy to do. And depending on your GPU, you may have six pins right here, you may have eight. Um, and on the newer GPUs as well, then you're gonna have even more. So this is very simple just to plug that in there as well. And that is our power supply connect it up and I'll plug that all in and we'll boot it up now and see if it's gonna work. All right, so we're up and running. It actually just worked first attempt. I didn't really expect this and fine. Okay, so it's running right now off the GTX 1060. Not a problem here. Now, because we do have the integrated graphics on the Ryzen 5 4500U, we can actually use the switchable graphics as well and you can run even more monitors now. So 
This particular mini PC does support four monitors, and we're able to now run, of course, a lot more now because of the external dedicated GPU that I've now hooked up. So I installed all the latest drivers here from NVIDIA. You do need to do this. So when you first get it set up, it will hunt for the drivers Windows update if you're gonna be using Windows, of course. Pull it through, but it won't be the most up-to-date one. So looking at the device manager, you will see that we do have here our display adapters too because the integrated graphics is still enabled. We can still use it. And if I tap here, and you'll see that, okay, Radon software, that's already installed, NVIDIA control panel as well, will give me the option of just having it on integrated graphics if you wanted to, or auto select. Now, it's not really gonna work as it would on a laptop here because we're going to be either plugged in directly from the HDMI, which I'm using right now, and that's on the dedicated GPU. But you can still use both of those GPUs is what I'm trying to get the point across here is that the integrated and the dedicated still be working so you can run various different displays, more displays that you would have been able to run before here. So I'm actually just gonna, well, that really doesn't matter here at the moment because I'm plugged in directly. So I'm just gonna keep it on the dedicated. And of course the processor, depending on what you're using, you can see this is the Ryzen 5. So it's definitely that mini PC that I'm using. I'm not trying to trick anyone. There's no trickery here. Performance scores. So what I did is I did run first We've got Firestrike, and this was run on the dedicated GPU. So you can see a graphics score here of 13,892 versus the integrated, which was the Vega 6 graphics on this particular uh, system on a chip here, and that was 3,227. So the difference, I just calculated that, the difference is almost 125% graphics performance increase from this synthetic benchmark. But what about gaming performance? I'm gonna test that now because on the integrated graphics, it actually ran 1080p GTA 5. Not too bad, average frame rate of somewhere around 45 to 50 frames per second. Let's see how it is now with the GTX 1060. So we're looking now at an approximate, almost three times performance increase here before we had about 40 to 50 frames per second. And now I'm getting almost sometimes about 150 frames per second. Here with that performance increase going from integrated Vega 6 graphics with the 4000 series, the Ryzen 5 4500U, to now gaming on a GTX 1060 with six gigabytes of RAM. This is not exactly a potent GPU. It's quite dated now. So if you got yourself the RTX 3080, then of course the difference would be a lot greater. And you're only losing about six to 8% versus running this in a desktop motherboard with the PCIe slot. But make sure, this is the most important thing here, you match your GPU to the CPU you have in your laptop or in your mini PC. Otherwise it's a bit pointless if you have a dated Core i3, but it does have an NVMe slot to then be running an RTX 3080. Well, that would be a little bit pointless because you would be severely bottlenecking that GPU because of the weak CPU. So this setup here worked fine for me and I've also tested an Intel 10th gen, 9th and 8th gen mini PC, an Intel laptop, it worked, they all worked, but I tested out an AMD Ryzen 7 4800H laptop that already has RTX 2060 graphics in it, that is the XMG Core 15 that I reviewed in the channel, it didn't want to work properly. So this would boot up fine, it would power up on boot and I tried all the different switch positions it would display an image, it would be fine, but it wasn't running at the GTX 1060 performance that you'd expect. It was just set up as a Microsoft basic display adapter. Even though I installed the NVIDIA drivers, Windows kept pulling up an asterisk and error uh, with that particular system. So I think it's down to the fact that I was using NVMe for the boot drive, my SSD, and also NVMe PCIe for this, and that caused some sort of resource conflict and that is why it simply wouldn't work with already having that RTX 2060 on board. So I think if your laptop's already got dedicated graphics and using two NVMe drives, uh, one being of course the GPU, one operating system is mentioned, then you really knew, do need to run your operating system off SATA 3, I believe, and then it should actually work. But I'm, I, I don't know, I can't guarantee this because my system only has two NVMe slots and that is it, that's all I've got for boot options. But for everything else, Using the number one position has worked for me, okay? For the mini PC, for this ASUS PN50 mini PC that I just reviewed in the channel as well, working just fine. And we can get a massive step up in performance going from integrated 
while very good for integrated, Vega 6 graphics in this to then a GTX 1060, or you could even put an RTX 3090 in this, okay? You're gonna lose around about six to eight percent performance versus putting this in a desktop, and then you could run into, depending on what mini PC or CPU you use, of course, CPU bottlenecks that may be limiting the performance of said GPU that you're gonna install, okay? So just make sure you go for a reasonably good combo. No point putting, putting a Core i3 mini PC paired up to an RTX 3080, because that would just, well, it'd be a bit silly, wouldn't it? But if you've got something that's say a very potent quad core or an eight core, definitely I would say go for it. If you just want to increase your gaming performance and you don't mind having this, which is really annoying having the cable attached to it. And if you want to just run the mini PC by itself or your laptop, you've got to open it up. You have to unscrew it, remove the cable, put the lid back on or the back cover back on. You get the idea. It's a little bit more painful, but if it's tied down and sitting on a desk all the time, it's not a problem. And it's really an easy and quite a cheap way to add a GPU to what most people after a few years didn't actually think we could upgrade. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, it was educational, then please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you thought it was trash, misleading or confusing, then well, you know, sorry, hopefully the next video. And do subscribe for more up and coming content from me. Bye for now.